Hey y'all, Hobby Drifter here. Today I'll be taking a look at the soul of Chogoking King Brachion slash Titanus, as well as the combined mode with all of the other previously released MMPR slash Geodanger Mecha. Released February 16th, 2019, at just under 30,000 yen. I think you'll all be happy to know that this big boy is the best representation of the character that has ever and likely will ever be released. While it is heavily inspired by the Legacy release, there are a few differences. Nearly all of the screw holes have been filled in, and there is an incredible amount of metal just all over this thing. In fact, the feet, tail, and body all have generous quantities of metal, as does the chest piece. The front tires are made from a super hard rubber and will keep it from sliding around on whatever shelf you have that will support its weight. Inside is now a shiny but not reflective metal color. Attack mode also looks great. The heavy cannons slide and lock into place, so there is absolutely no worry of them falling off due to their really, really heavy weight. From top to bottom, the SOC King Brachion is a beautiful piece. Now, there's only so much that can be done to improve on such a simple design without sacrificing accuracy, but I think Bandai has done it with this release. There's beautiful detailing, there's plenty of metal, and the whole thing is made of high quality materials. To me, this is the definitive King Brachion or Titanus. Now the box is another story. It's kind of tiny. It's far more compact than Daijujin or Dragon Caesar. And the box is just really tight. And on the one hand, that's nice, since it won't take up too much space. But one major bummer, at least for me, is that it doesn't use that amazing shot of the ultimate Daijujin that the original and Super Mini Pla versions used. So, anyway. The body of the figure comes in this simple styrofoam tray with a really well-secured cardboard lid. The removable bits come in a shallow plastic tray. Now, in between the two is a tiny little instruction pamphlet. And unfortunately, the weight of the mostly metal accessories put a noticeable circular indent in my instructions. And I imagine that'll happen to just about everyone's, too. So, yeah, those are the nitpicks about the box. I imagine a lot of that is down to cost-saving measures. Uh, the SOC Brachion retails for less than Daijujin, and that is something that has never happened before. The simple packaging keeps the cost down and makes it a lot more attractive to retailers who, you know, also have to conserve shelf space. So, now we move on to the main event, the Ultimate Daijujin, or the original Dino Ultra Zord, if you like. So, the combination is nearly identical to how it's worked since 1992. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Now, I gotta mention, the combined weight of this is just incredible. It's like a beautiful brick. Uh, the only real difference is there's a little clip that snaps onto the T-Rex tail, and it plugs into Brachion's back to help it stand up straight. Uh, and yeah, as everyone suspected, the added weight of the gloves does limit the posability of Daijujin's arms. But, everybody, this is it. This is the best representation of this character to ever grace retail shelves. It will not be matched anytime soon, if ever. Uh, as of this writing in February 2019, uh, buying all three pieces needed to get the combined form will set you back six or seven hundred dollars on Amazon. Um, it's not bad. Uh, for a while, Daijujin alone was selling for around 400 bucks on the secondary market. Um, are you planning on adding this thing to your collection? Have you already? Are you fine with some previous release? Please let me know down in the comments. I always love to hear from other fans around the world. Uh, all right, everyone, that's all for now. I'm the Hobby Drifter. You're all great. Take care and happy hobbying.